when your father says something like that to you, like you're not as good, I mean, that's what you remember. And so all my life, I have really figured that I really wasn't quite as good as the rest, but I worked hard. Andy Williams is an impressive musician with chart-topping hits and iconic status in the music industry. The talented singer charmed the hearts of his fans and that of women even more. His ability to charm women have led to some scandalous relationships. And in this video, we'll dive through this unknown yet intriguing side of Andy Williams' life. For Old Time's Sake presents... He died 12 years ago. The truth about Andy Williams' affairs come to light. Early Life Named Howard Andrew Williams at birth but professionally known as Andy Williams. He was born on December 3, 1927, in the small town of Wall Lake, Iowa, to a working-class family. His father, Jay Emerson, worked in the post office and insurance office. Hailing from Iowa in the U.S. and being the youngest of four brothers, Andy developed a keen interest in music from a young age. But he wasn't the only one. His brothers also loved music, and so he began performing with his brothers in a local Presbyterian church. Hanging on the Christmas tree, it's holiday season. So hoop-dee-doo, and hickory dock, don't you never get to hang His talent and passion for music would eventually lead him to a remarkable career as a singer and entertainer. But Andy almost didn't become a musician. When the family lived in Cheviot, Ohio, Andy attended Western Hills High School in Cincinnati. However, the family moved to California, and so he finished his high school at University High School in West Los Angeles. When he was 17, despite making some small strides in music, Andy dropped everything to join the United States Merchant Marine and served until the end of World War II. Romance with Kay Thompson Remember how we said Andy had begun to make small strides in music before the war? There was one woman who took his art to another level, and he even had an affair with this woman. Curious about who she was? Stay glued to that screen. So, growing up, Andy and his brothers, Bob, Don, and Dick Williams, all formed the Williams Brothers Quartet in late 1938 when they lived in Ohio. They didn't form a band for the sake of it. The brothers were ready to go all in. They performed their craft on radios in the Midwest. They began at WHO in Des Moines, Iowa, and also performed at WLS in Chicago, and finally, WLW in Cincinnati. Seeking more success, the brothers moved to Los Angeles in 1943. Then, something amazing happened. They had one of the greatest opportunities of their lifetime, the brothers got the chance to sing with the great Bing Crosby on his 1944 hit record, Swinging on a Star. It was the start of something wonderful, as they even soon began to appear in films. They appeared in four musical films, Janie 1944, Kansas City Kitty 1944, Something in the Wind 1947, and Ladies Man 1947. Then the group faced challenges, just as they had success and glory in their hands. Bob, the eldest of the quartet, was drafted to the military. The timing was unfortunate. At the time, the group was signed by Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer to appear in Anchors Away and Ziegfeld Follies in 1945. Sadly, without Bob, MGM didn't think the brothers could achieve the same things. So their contract got cancelled. But there was hope. Remember that woman we mentioned earlier? She came to their rescue, and her name was Kay Thompson. Not long after their contract got canceled, Kay Thompson, another radio star who had become the head of the vocal department at MGM, saw their potential. So she hired the remaining three William brothers to sing in her large choir on many soundtracks for MGM films, including the very popular The Harvey Girls in 1946. Bob completed his military service and got to join his brothers on a new project to sing the soundtrack to the movie Good News 1947. During this time, something else was brewing. There was an affair blossoming between Andy and Thompson. Speaking of affairs, his affair with Thompson wouldn't be the only relationship he was involved in. There were others, and they all led to scandals, but more on them later. Among them, was Andy's involvement with the wife of a powerful political figure. Want to find out who that was? Watch on. 
When his relationship with Thompson began, William was 19 at the time while Thompson was 39. It was scandalous. And because of this age difference, they didn't want the public to hear about it. Not many would have accepted it, and the relationship could hurt their celebrity image. However, as we'll soon show you, their relationship wasn't hidden for long. Things weren't just sexual between the two, it was also professional. Thompson was a defining factor in how big a star Andy turned out to be. Apart from putting her faith in him and his brothers when she signed them, she honed his skills and shaped him as the successful artist that he turned out to be, despite trying to hide their relationship. The couple discovered something. It's Hollywood. Secrets usually don't stay secrets. Rumors of their affair got out, but they didn't mind. They continued spending time together and had some fun in Thompson's coastal home in 1948. Those times were great. The 70s, on the other hand, were dark. We'll tell you about this soon. Even after his first marriage, Williams remained faithful and loyal to Thompson for over a decade. Even though they were no longer together, he continued to speak highly of her through various media platforms. Affair with Ethel Kennedy Thompson wouldn't be the only high-profile woman the star singer would have a relationship with. His relationship with him wouldn't be the only scandalous. Andy was close to Senator Robert F. Kennedy and his wife, Ethel. Then this closeness led to something scandalous. After Robert F. Kennedy was assassinated, Andy had an alleged affair with Ethel which reportedly lasted a while. Every person in media began to wonder about those two, and this started affecting Andy's public profile. Both he and Ethel denied all accusations. They insisted they were just friends who grieve in memory of Kennedy. Though over the years, they weren't able to detach themselves from the tabloids, and the rumor persisted. Andy insisted he wasn't unfaithful in his marriage to Claudine, murder trial of ex-wife. Andy met Claudine while driving through Las Vegas back in 1960, when he found her standing at the side of the road beside her broken car. So, Andy being the gentleman that he was, did the most humane thing and stepped out of his car to offer help to Claudine. Little did he know, he would become his future wife. Claudine, a French dancer, was a beauty to behold. She had dark curly hair and a pretty face. With her features, it is no surprise why Andy couldn't resist her and was captivated by her beauty, despite being with Thompson at the time. A year later, the couple got married on December 15, 1961, and in eight years they had three children, Noel, Robert, and Christian, who died in 2019. <laughs> However, they wouldn't be together for the rest of their lives. Their marriage failed and the couple got separated in 1970 but did not divorce till 1975. The process was rough for the singer, and it affected his music. He found love with Claudine, but he also found a disaster. Claudine turned his world upside down just when they finally got separated. She was trying to get her life together and got involved with a champion skier and Olympic medalist, Spider Savage. What happened next will shock you. For Claudine, the worst was yet to come. She went crazy. Not long after she got involved with her new lover, something terrible happened. She allegedly fatally shot him in the stomach while they were in Aspen at a ski chalet in Colorado, 1976. The young medalist died in the ambulance before he could reach the hospital for proper care. Claudine was charged with fatally shooting her boyfriend and then murder became a sensation. It was all over the news. Andy didn't abandon Claudine. He showed up to court every single day to offer his support, testified on her behalf in court at the murder trial, and also provided legal assistance. She is the mother of my children. I accept her story. I think she is telling the truth. Williams said at the time. He had argued his doubt that his ex-wife was capable of such an act and insisted she was innocent. The dancer was able to plead that the shooting was accidental and served a short period in jail. After his divorce from Claudine, Andy had a second marriage. He met a woman, Debbie Haas, whom he met through a mutual friend. They formed a friendship early on as both are avid lovers of golf, so the chemistry blossomed. After dating for a while, the couple got married on May 3, 1991. However, they didn't have any child together. William always spoke lovingly about his wife. 
He once stated that his biggest accomplishment apart from his fame and success was meeting Debbie and marrying her. He explained their quiet life and his wife's love for animals. Her love for animals made them get a ranch where they spent most of their time raising cattle. Rumors of other infidelities. Well married or not, Andy still liked to have casual flings. As a handsome and charming man, he definitely was irresistible to the female gender. Once, he purchased an expensive diamond necklace for a young Danish hotel clerk named Susie while he was on a tour in Copenhagen, circa 1970. He even left a note with instructions for them to meet when he had the gift delivered to her room. This happened when he was still faithfully married to Claudine, his wife at the time. When confronted with the accusations, Williams denied everything and maintained his faithfulness, befriending political leaders. Throughout his career, Andy has released a multitude of chart-topping songs and albums, amassing numerous awards and accolades. However, his most enduring legacy lies in the profound impact he has had on his musical craft. In an era of evolving music, Andy steadfastly adhered to his roots, demonstrating the difference between his music and others. He also was involved in TV shows. He hosted The Andy Williams Show, a television variety show from 1962 to 1971, along with numerous TV specials, which was a large hit and very successful. He played a crucial part in propelling the Osmond brothers into the limelight. In 1964, the Osmond brothers, Alan, Wayne, Merrill, and Jay, secured a regular spot on The Andy Williams Show. What was meant to be a one-time appearance turned into a recurrent opportunity due to their talent and rapport, landing them a consistent slot on the family-friendly variety show. It wasn't only the Osmond brothers that Andy helped launch their career. He featured a diverse range of talents, including comedy, rock, jazz, and R&B. Some of the most notable talents with whom he maintained mentor-like relationships were the remarkable Aretha Franklin, Richard Pryor, Woody Allen, and the Jackson Five. He also played a role in introducing Canadian singer Anne Murray to national audiences just before her 1970 hit, Snowbird, propelled her to international stardom. However, music and TV shows wouldn't be all he was known for. Williams is highly known for his business ventures and political interests. He has utilized these various platforms to champion his views and political views. The singer was close to RFK, and the night RFK was assassinated in 1968. Andy was present at the Ambassador Hotel with other celebrity guests. He performed Battle Hymn of the Republic at RFK's funeral in New York. The song left a profound impact. He took a stand as a vocal advocate for political figures like John Lennon. He had defended Lennon's right to continue residing in America when the Nixon administration threatened to deport the outspoken Beatle. Williams's political beliefs were in line with his public persona as he openly supported the counterculture and anti-war movements of the 1960s. He actively participated in legal efforts to thwart the controversial deportation attempt while Lennon was involved in high-profile anti-war activism. This display of principle, prioritizing personal loyalty over conservative expectations, came as a surprise to many onlookers. But as time went on after the political turmoil of the 60s and 70s, Williams started to support Republican figures and the party's traditional beliefs more and more. In his later years, he was a proud arch-conservative and didn't hold back in criticizing President Obama, even accusing him of promoting Marxist ideology. Some thought he was returning to his middle-class American roots and leaving behind the more tumultuous days of liberal activism. He cozied with leaders like Ronald Reagan and George Bush and also maintained lifelong bonds, still connecting him to Democratic stalwarts like Tip O'Neill and Ted Kennedy. His personal connections show a stronger allegiance to individuals rather than rigid ideological alignment. This flexibility enabled him to adapt to the changing political landscape using his charm and character. As he navigated the politician scene, Andy continued to enjoy success with his works, and one of his most iconic works is Moon River, which played a significant role in shaping Andy Williams's success. 
It not only became his signature tune, but also earned him two Grammy Awards, solidifying his status as a prominent figure in the music industry. Its impact on his career contributed to his enduring legacy as a celebrated vocalist. Andy Williams played a pivotal role in popularizing the song beyond the film. In the film, Audrey Hepburn performed Moon River, and her rendition instantly captivated audiences. It won several prestigious awards, including the Oscar for Best Original Song. At the 1962 Academy Awards ceremony, Williams debuted his rendition of Moon River. The song's lyrics, with their simplicity and emotional depth, depict the river as a symbol of both dreams and heartache. The narrator conveyed a yearning for youthful adventure, expressing a desire to trace the river to the end of the rainbow, a metaphor for life's most precious rewards and fulfillment. After signing with Columbia Records, Williams's rendition of Moon River achieved tremendous success. His influence on the song has left a lasting legacy, evident through his company, theater, and autobiography, all bearing its name. Whenever Moon River plays today, we fondly recall not only Audrey Hepburn, but also the unforgettable Andy Williams, whose voice ensured that this timeless classic would resonate across generations. Some of his other works that gained recognition include Butterfly, 1957, Danny Boy, a poignant rendition of the traditional Irish ballad, Can't Get Used to Losing You, a 60s hit that captured hearts, Hopeless, a fool never learns, and dear heart melodic gems that left a lasting impression. Where do I begin love story, a romantic ballad that touched souls. Andy Williams made pop standards cool, appealing to a wide audience. For Williams, Moon River was more than a song. It was a legacy that continues to enchant listeners worldwide, death. Andy made an undeniable mark on the music industry with his extraordinary career. His story epitomizes humble beginnings, unwavering dedication, and an unparalleled passion for his musical craft. His smooth lyrics and easy listening songs made him famous. His works continue to captivate audiences and inspire new generations of musicians. His timeless songs and genuine passion for the art form will continue to resonate with fans for years to come, ensuring that his art will forever reign supreme in the hearts of music aficionados worldwide. One of his impactful moments was when he became known as Mr. Christmas after becoming an icon during the holiday season. This reputation started when he released the Andy Williams Christmas album in 1963. The album featured traditional carols and was accompanied by his first Christmas television special, which highlighted his family and set a standard for holiday entertainment. So, in the 1980s and 1990s, he started hosting televised Christmas specials, focusing on celebrating family and the spirit of the holidays. To solidify his status as a holiday legend, Williams opened the Andy Williams Moon River Theater in Branson, Missouri in 1992. The theater provided a platform for him to host his Christmas shows and entertain fans with live performances every year. This became a highly anticipated holiday tradition, attracting people from all over who wanted to be part of the magical Christmas spirit. Contemporary artists continue to cover his hits such as It's the Most Wonderful Time of the Year and Happy Holiday, ensuring that Andy Williams' legacy on holiday music will be treasured for generations to come. Speaking of treasures, his performances were a gem. They featured a mix of classic holiday songs and family-friendly entertainment that appealed to all genders, age groups, and generations of fans. In the end, Andy Williams' roots was what brought about the successful musical career he had from the 1950s, lasting for more than seven decades until his death due to bladder cancer in September 2012. During a show, Williams announced to the audience that he was battling with bladder cancer. He was hopeful that he could beat it as he had seen many other people do. But this time, hope failed the singer. The doctors told him his treatment was no longer working for him and there was nothing they could do about it. Not having any other choice, Andy decided to go home where he could pass away, surrounded by family and friends, and most importantly, his wife. 
He wanted to be remembered for the good memories and not his painful exit. Andy Williams passed away on September 25, 2012, at the age of 84. Following his cremation, his ashes were scattered into the artificial waterway known as Moon River at his theater in Branson as a tribute to his legacy. A memorial service in honor of Williams was held a month later. He has left a mark in the genre, especially in traditional pop and easy listening, which hugely influences the listeners around the globe till now. All right, guys, we hope you liked the video. Tell us what part of Andy Williams' lifestyle was most shocking to you. Was it the section about his affairs or how his music impacted our favorite holiday season? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. Make sure to subscribe if you are new so you don't miss out on our trending videos and more. Well, it's expected that Andy will speak well about Debbie.